Hallelujah. Blessed day to each and every one of you there in Toronto, Canada. Uh, praise God for this wonderful day that He had given to us uh, before uh, we we study the Word of God. Uh, gusto ko pong iparating ang pagbati po ng mga kapatiran natin dito sa Japan. The whole FBCFI Japan is greeting you. We all greet you a happy, happy 24th year anniversary. And all of us here in Japan are glad that we are part of this celebration. It's a privilege for us to be uh, part of this uh, great day, uh, knowing how God is so faithful to you all there in Toronto for 24 years. And I believe that in that 24 years, uh, you have experienced a lot of wonderful things from sa ating Panginoong Diyos. Uh, praise God for those years na binigay sa atin ng Panginoon. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, even for me, it's my first time actually na uh, magminsahe sa anniversary. And uh, medyo kinakabahan dahil uh, I don't know how to really, uh, especially when I receive the message uh, of our overseer, Pastor Rachel, last week asking me if I can be one of the speaker for today's celebration, for today's event. And sabi nung una, medyo kinabahan po ako dahil nung unang inisip ko, baka kailangan English na diretsyo ang pagmimensahe. But sabi naman ni Pastora Rachel, sabi niya, uh, I can share the word of God in Tagalog and in English. Kaya pagpasensya niyo po ang pag english ko. <laughs> Hallelujah. But anyway, let's uh, the Holy Spirit will be the one to move and... Uh, Siyang magpaintindi po sa atin. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for this wonderful day you have given to us. We thank you for this time again to sit down at your feet, O Lord. To listen to your word. To be taught by your Holy Spirit, O God. Father, just continue to speak to us through your word. And allow your Holy Spirit to convict each and everyone's heart, O Lord God, so that we will be enlightened, O Lord, so that we will be encouraged, Almighty God, and so that we will be able, allow us even, O Lord God, to grasp your message today. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Let no flesh be exalted, but only your name, Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, uh, it's a wonderful day again to worship God. Hallelujah. So, let's uh, study the Word of God. Ang pag-aaralan po natin ngayon ay we are going to learn how important time is, mga kapatid. Kung gaano po kahalaga ang oras. Now, before, uh, I think how many, mga lumipas na ang ilang buwan, we receive a message from our bishop uh, teaching us uh, how important time is. Because time is uh, it's very precious. We are paid by time here on earth. And uh, it is part of God's creation to measure things. And even our life, even our time here on earth, we are measured by time. Kaya ang buhay natin ay nasusukat rin sa oras mga kapatid. And even sa, uh, even sa uh, ating trabaho, we are paid by time, by the work, sa haba ng oras ng tinrabaho natin. Kaya makikita natin mga kapatid that time is so precious here on earth. And your time, our time, is also precious to God. It is very important to God kung paano natin gugugulin ang oras na binibigay niya sa atin mga kapatid. Because it is God who give us this time to live. It is God, itong oras natin na nabubuhay sa Panginoong Diyos po yan uh, nang gagaling. Now, uh, let's study and let's see nang sa ganun hindi po natin masayang ang mga panahon na binibigay sa atin ng Panginoong Diyos so that we will not uh, lose this time that God is giving to us. But instead, for every day that God is giving to us, we will be blessed and that on every day na binibigay sa atin ng Panginoong Diyos, we will not miss the blessing of God sa ating buhay. Amen? So, let's open our Bible in the book of uh, John chapter 9 uh, from verses uh, 1 to 4 muna po tayo. John chapter 9 verses 1 to 4. Sabi niya, 
in verse 1, as he went as he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciple asked him, Rabbi, who seen this man or his parents that he was born blind? Now, as Jesus was walking with his disciples, meron po silang nadaanan na isang bulag na tao. And his disciple asked, siguro curious sila, sabi nila, sino po, Panginoon, ang nagkasala? Itong tao bang ito or ang kanyang mga magulang? Dahil I believe na alam ng mga disciple na ang root cause ng suffering ng tao ay kasalanan. And that's why they are asking, sino ang may kasala? Sino, bakit siya ganyan? Kaya, there are three kinds of suffering and tribulation na siner po ng ating bishop. The first one is the tribulation or suffering of the unbelievers. Uh, the second one is the suffering of unfaithful or uncommitted believer, although mga Kristiyano sila, and yet they are suffering like the unbelievers because of disobedience, of being compromised, of being unfaithful to God, of being uncommitted. Kaya makita mo, yung suffering ng unbelievers is also suffering ng mga Christians, uncommitted. And the third kind of tribulation is the tribulation or the suffering of all the faithful and true believers of Jesus Christ. But suffering, most of our suffering, and most of the suffering of all the people, even in their time of Jesus Christ, the suffering is because of sin, dahil sa kasalanan. Now, there are a lot of suffering na pinagdaraanan. Even tayo mga Kristiyano, marami tayong mga pinagdaraanan ring suffering or tribulation. And that's why we have to ask God sometimes, it is always good to come into the presence of God and always ask God kung bakit pinagdadaanan natin ang mga bagay na ito. Because I believe that God is speaking to us through these circumstances na nangyayari sa atin. It's always good to reflect and ask God dahil baka kaya tayo nahihirapan ay may mga kasalanan tayo na hindi natin nakikita. And madali, kung sa mga Kristiyano, madaling madistinguish kung kasalanan ang inom, uh, yung inom, pag-iinom. Alam ka agad natin na kasalanan yan. But there are spiritual sins na hindi na, natin nakikita. Sometimes pride. Kala natin, hindi nga tayo umiinom, hindi nga tayo naninigarilyo, hindi nga tayo uh, nagpupunta sa mga makamundo. But sometimes tayo mga Kristiyano, marami tayong mga uh, pride. And that's why yun pa naman ang pinakaayaw ng Panginoong Diyos. It's a boastful heart. And that's why it's always good for us to always come into the presence of God and to always ask for forgiveness, mga kapatid. So that because if we will not repent, if we will not pray, and if we will not reflect, then itong suffering na pinagdaraanan natin ay hindi titigil until we repent, until we come and we allow the Word of God to change us, mga kapatid. Repentance is not just turning away from sin, but repentance actually always start from being changed in the mind. If you would remember the story in the prodigal son, how he real when he come to his senses, then doon lang nag-umpisa na magkaroon ng pagbabago sa kanyang buhay. Because he start now to act according to the will of God, and that's why nagkaroon ng pagbabago sa kanyang buhay. Because, let me tell you, my brethren, that itong pag-iisip natin, our mind, yan ang ninakaw ng kaaway. Yan ang kinurap ng kaaway. If kung nakuha ng kaaway ang pag-iisip mo, nakuha niya ang buhay mo, mga kapatid. Because everything we do, start from our mind. Everything we do, or even ang ating buhay, Ang buhay natin, kung anong status natin ngayon, is bunga ng kung anong nasa isip natin. What we are now is the fruit of what is in our mind. Because lahat ng ginagawa natin ay nag-uumpisa sa ating pag-iisip. Wala naman sigurong sabi niyang, wala naman nag siguro ng pinggan na hindi niya iisipin mag-ugas muna ng pinggan. Before you do anything else, nag yan sa pag-iisip. And that's why yan ang gusto ng, pang, ng demonyo na kunin ang ating pag-iisip. 
Dahil pag napuno niya ang pag-iisip natin ng mga bagay niya at naniwala tayo, nakuha niya at na-convince niya ang pag-iisip natin, sa mga pamamaraan niya din ang buhay natin ay magiging worse. That's why repentance, and if there is a change of mind, then there is, will always be a change of life. And without a change of uh, mind, kahit ikulong mo pa yan, kahit bugbugin mo pa yan, hindi yan magbabago. Unless mabago ang pag-iisip niya. And only the Word of God can truly change our life, our minds. Amen? That's why Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says that, Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Transformation will come only when there is a change of mind. And only the Word of God will change our mind. But if we allow these words of Jesus Christ to change us. Pero kung nagmamatigas tayo, and ito ang problema, dahil ito kaya maraming tao sa simbahan ang hindi nababago dahil ayaw nilang mabago ang kanilang pag-iisip. Napaka uh, ano nila. Meron yung mga tao na uh, maprinsipyo na ayaw nilang baguhin ng Panginoong Diyos ang salita ng ang kanilang buhay. Dahil sa akala nila, alam na nila ang salita ng Panginoong Diyos. And sometimes they think that they are better than the preachers. And that's why they don't want to listen to those who are sharing the word of God. Because they thought that they are better. No. We should always know how to humble ourselves. And always allow the word of God to transform our mind. Kahit, kasi kahit na matagal ka sa simbahan. Even if you spend all the days of your life in the church. In, but if you will not allow your mind to be transformed by the word of God, we will not be changed. We will always be the same person mula nung pumasok ka hanggang ngayon. Kaya mati, makikita ninyo mga kapatid na kahit ang tagal na sa simbahan, hindi pa rin lumalago, maprinsipyo pa rin. Why? Because hawak ng demonyo ang isip. The devil had blinded the minds of the unbeliever, the Bible says, so that they will not believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we need to be transformed. And we all understood, marinig natin yung preaching nila bishop, ng ating mga bishop, that in the beginning, there is perfect righteousness. Adam always worshiped God. Adam is a true worshiper of God. He, all, he loved God with all of his heart. He keeps on harvesting all the best fruits of the trees on, in the Garden of Eden. He, and he always worshiped God with all the best fruit that he can give to God. But when he sinned against God, when he fall, hindi na ganun ang pagmamahal ng tao sa kanya. The devil had blinded them. Until now, people are being blinded by the enemy. Their minds. And that's why uh, if we need, if you want a changed life, we need to allow the, the work of the word of God to transform our minds. Amen. For example, kagaya ngayon, yung our bishop are teaching that uh, the greatest commandment is to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is to love our neighbor the way we love ourselves. But when Adam sinned, baliktad na ang nangyari. People love their families, their jobs, their friends more than God. No longer the original purpose of God ang natutupad. In the beginning, ang priority ng tao ang Panginoong Diyos. But the devil had twisted the mind, had uh, corrupted the mind of people. And that's why uh, iba ang pamamaraan ng mga tao. And that's why people are suffering. So if people are suffering many kinds of suffering because there are many sins that people are doing. And if you want those sins to stop in our life, we need to repent. We need to stop. We need to reflect. And we need to allow the Word of God to transform us, to enlighten our life so that there will be change in our life. We are running out of time, my brother and sisters. That's why, yeah, we need to allow the Word of God. And I pray that this message and all the messages of our pastors for this anniversary and celebration will not just be another message, 
but it would be a message for a lifetime. I pray that this message will always will be may tanim po sa puso natin. That we will always meditate on these messages that our pastors and bishops are teaching to us. That it would not just be a message for this day and tomorrow we will forget. No. I pray that the messages that we hear will always be a message of our life so that we will grow, so that we will maintain uh, being transformed sa ating pag-iisip. Amen? And that's why sabi ni Jesus sa kanila in verse 3, sabi niya, Neither this man nor his parents sin, said Jesus, but this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. Hindi silang nagkasala, sabi ni Jesus, pero nangyari ito para may display ang kapangyarihan ng Panginoong Diyos. And sometimes there are suffering that is happening in our life so that the work of God might be displayed in our life. And that we can be also an instrument para ang mga tao ay maniwala sa Panginoong Diyos. Let me give myself an example on this. Because before I believed to Jesus Christ, before I became a Christian, I am, uh, maybe you can call me an atheist. Because I do not believe that God exists. I do not believe that there is God. Although I am looking of His creation and I know that someone had created, but the devil had blinded my mind that he do not allow me to believe to God. He always, there are things in my mind that I am, I, that I'm so doubtful. Until I pray to God, until I start to serve God, and, but still there is this bondage. And I, and I pray to God, Lord, please reveal yourself to me. I want to know you if you are real and true. And one time God really uh, allowed suffering. And my suffering that time is I had an, a severe headache, migraine, na parang sasabog ang ulo ko. Na lahat ng itik in kong pagkain at even water, I... I was vomiting. Sinusuka ko lahat ito. And the pain is so severe na parang ikakamatay ko na. Pag matutulog ako, mas lalong sumasakit. And yan ang suffering ko. And I started, I don't know how to pray. I don't know how to ask God for uh, healing. Because uh, nag-uumpisa pa lang ako manampalataya that time. But the, dev, that the, the enemy don't want to let let go of me and that's why he's putting all those negative things and doubts about God until God allow and until I pray that prayer and God dealt with me and give me that uh, pain that uh, suffering and and I, at that time nung masakit po yung ulo ko I pray to God Lord uh, please heal me I, uh, no the prayer is uh, when I'm having that uh uh, migraine, I prayed, Lord, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Oh, that's the only prayer na sinabi ko nun. I don't know how to ask for healing. The only prayer, yung word lang na nasabi ko is, Jesus, I love you. And I don't know if I really mean that word, but that's the only prayer na ang alam ko masabi. Dahil yan nang lumabas lang sa bibig ko. And even na yun lang ang hiningi ko, God is so merciful that He, I receive my healing instantly. I felt a ground from my head to uh, to my feet. And at that very moment, I was healed instantly. And I was crying. And I keep on crying that, that night. That even I lumabas ako, sinabi ko sa pamilya ko, na ang nangyari sa akin na kagalingan, but uh, nang doon lahat sila sa salas, uh, sa they are watching and when I told them that uh, testimony, they are just looking at me na tulala na parang hindi naniniwala. And that's why I went back to my room again and I keep on crying and Lord, I thank you that you revealed yourself to me. And from that moment on, natanggal yung doubt ko sa Panginoong Diyos and I believe that Jesus Christ is alive. From that time on, I know and I know that Jesus Christ is real and He is alive. And let me tell you, my brethren, Jesus Christ is alive. The Jesus that I am talking to you, the Jesus that our bishop and pastors are talking to you, He is real and He is alive. Amen? Kaya, 
That's that's what happened to me. And sometimes suffering happens to people so that the work of God might be displayed. And that message, that is the message that I'm carrying wherever I go. That when I go for outreach, I preach this Jesus who healed me. And I can see the miracle of God happening. One time we went for outreach. And there is this uh, kid na may sakit, may sis sa And the doctor said that he must be operated because of that big sis na bumabara sa chanya. And that father came and we prayed for his child. And instantly, that kid uh, ay gumaling. And because of that miracle of God, outreach was born. People believe. And you see, suffering sometimes happens to us so that uh, the work of God might be displayed. Not for our glory, but for His glory. And that's why when you are going through suffering, even right now, you should ask God. Why God is allowing that thing to your life? Why God is allowing that suffering? Because I believe that God is talking to you. If God talks to us in many ways, sometimes through people, sometimes through sufferings. And uh, if we will not listen to the warnings of God from other people that He's using, then He will talk to us deeper. Sometimes sickness and sometimes accidents. But we don't want to, ayaw na natin na humantong sa accident at sakit. Kaya if your pastor are giving you warning, these messages are giving you warning, it's good for you, it is good for us to repent immediately. Not Let's not wait for deeper suffering. Amen? While we have still time. Because we are running out of time, my dear brethren. Time is very, very important. Sabi niya dyan, in verse 4, as long as it is day, Jesus Christ is now. As long as it is day, we must do the work of Him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. Jesus Christ is saying, as long habang may pag, while we still have chance, we must do the work of Him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. There is a limited time. There is a work to be done, but in a limited time, mga kapatid. God is giving us free believers in Christ. God is giving free believers in Christ fellowship a work to do. Generations to generation. But in our time, sa panahon natin ngayon, meron po tayong assignment sa Panginoong Diyos na dapat natin gawin. There is a work to be done. This is not work, but it, this is hindi natin trabaho, but it is a work of God. And God expects us na tayong mga believers Tayo ang mga gagawa nito. Jesus Christ is saying this to His disciples. There is a work to be done. We must do the work. Jesus Christ says. So if we are a true follower of Jesus Christ, and if we are a true disciples of Jesus Christ, then we should take part of this responsibility that God is giving us to do. We have, we have a vision of this church. Meron pong vision ang church natin, free believers in Christ. To, that is to, uh, are, are, we are mandated to organize preachings, teachings, crusade, and gospel, and gospel concerts, and various ministries to plant churches and train leaders and workers to build, to serve, and to build the kingdom of God. We are mandated by God to do these ministries, mga kapatid. So we have an assignment to do. Hindi lang po pastor ang may assignment nito. Assignment po lahat natin ito. We are mandated by God because we are family. And we should all do this as family, mga kapatid. We should help one another to fulfill this mandate of God dito sa pamilyang ito. We must support one another to fulfill this because we are running out of time. We are getting older and older and older, mga kapatid. But we have to do this. We have to fulfill this mandate of God in our time. Because the next generation are coming. And if we, our generation, we will not do our part, then we will lose this generation and we will lose the next generation, mga kapatid. We have to do our best in our time. The Old, the old Testament people have done their best to serve God. They have done all what they can to serve God. But some also have been unfaithful. But 
Let's wag nating gayahin yung mga unfaithful but sila ay maging example natin sa pagsisim sila ay maging uh, warning natin ma matuto tayo maging example natin sila na wag natin gawin ang mga pagkakamali nila. That many of them have lost their opportunity to enter the Canaan, Canaan the promised land because they have nagpabaya sila sa kanilang panahon. Ganun rin po sana tayo mga kapatid. Huwag nating hayaan na lumipas ang panahon ng ating buhay na hindi natin nagampanan. Ang ating dapat nagampanan in the kingdom of God. All of us, my brethren, have responsibility dito sa simbahan na ito. All of us has use. God brought us in this family because meron tayong dapat gawin at may maiaambag tayo. Let's not think na wala tayong silbi sa loob ng simbahan. Lahat po tayo mga kapatid may gamit sa loob ng simbahan. All of us has responsibility to do in the church, in the kingdom of God. Even po kayo dyan mga kapatid in Toronto, all of you there, regardless of your age, regardless kung ilang taon ka na, meron kang or kung anong taon ka, meron kang responsibility na dapat mong gawin dyan sa Toronto. Huwag mong sabihin na ay sila lang naman dahil sila ang leaders, sila lang naman. No. God brought you there for a reason. He did not just call you to uh, sit down and uh, be a participant, but He expect you to do your part. Imaginin mo sa buong katawan ng isang tao, at ikaw ang ikaw dapat yung kamay na linagay ng Panginoong Diyos. And how paano magfa-function ang buong katawan kung hindi mag-function rin ang kamay? Hindi kumpleto ang pagtrabaho dahil hindi nagfa-function ang kamay. That's why all of us, lahat po tayo may function sa loob ng simbahan. Amen. But you have to do your part. Because God is giving you a responsibility na dapat natin gawin. And we must support this mission and vision of the church of free believers in Christ Fellowship. We have to support. When there is a crusade, we support. When there is a gospel concert, we support. Even our pastors who are going through many countries, we have to support them, pray for them. Support even in their finances. Because there is a work to be done, my brethren. Meron po tayong responsibilidad. There is a work to do. Now, I want you to understand this uh, two verse na kailangan nating isipin parate. Let's always think of these two verse to always uh, warn us, to always uh, para ma-value po natin yung araw natin, mga kapatid. Yung binibigay sa atin ng Panginoong Diyos na pagkakataon. Now, in Matthew chapter 24, verse 32, Sabi niya dyan, Therefore, keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. Sabi dito ng Panginoong Jesus, it is Jesus Christ Himself says, Therefore, keep watch. Mag-ingat kayo because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. And in the following verses, in, following, in chapter 25, dyan natin makikita yung uh, mga nagsilbi, mga Kristiyanong nagsilbi sa Panginoong Diyos. The five virgins and the ten foolish, uh, the, the ten virgins, ay bakit hindi nakapasok ang lima? Because naging pabaya sila sa kanilang spiritual walk ng Pang sa Panginoong Diyos. They have wasted their time. Instead of preparing of coming of Jesus Christ, they have wasted their time. But praise God for the five wise virgins or the Christians who are faithful not wasting their time on Facebook, on social media, they are not wasting their time going around in pasyal pasyal, namamasyal lang, no. But these ten virgins, I believe that they have ex ginamit talaga nilang oras nila para magsilbi sa Panginoong Diyos. It's why they are always filled with the Holy Spirit. You want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, then you must serve. Paano, for example, isipin natin mga kapatid, paano, why are you going, kung kayo mga kapatid, bakit mo gagasulinahan? Bakit mo gagasila, gagasulinaan ang sasakyan na nakaparada lang? Bakit mo gagasulinaan ang sasakyan na hindi naman nagagamit at hindi naandar? Kasi ang gasulinahan mo, 
is yung sasakyan na nagagamit. Gasolinahan mo yung nagagamit sa sakyan na tumatakbo at nagpa-function ng maayos. The same thing in spiritually. Why will God anoint and why would God fill those people who don't want to serve in the kingdom of God? What is the use of being filled with the Holy Spirit and not be serving in the kingdom of God? There is a reason why God is filling us with His presence so that we can bring that presence of God to reach out for souls. Remember the life of Remember the life of uh, Zacchaeus, the tax collector. He was so wealthy. And Jesus Christ says, I must stay at your house today. And while they were eating and feasting, Jesus Christ is not even preaching. But because of the presence of Jesus Christ, the heart of Zacchaeus was changed. And he says, Lord, I give now half of my possession to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything... I will pay back four times the amount. You see, the heart of Zacchaeus on that day was, nung hindi niya pa nakikilala si Jesus, napakatigas. And at, when he was with Jesus Christ, biglang nabago yung kanyang puso because of the presence of God, because of the presence of Jesus Christ. And he says, Lord, Alam natin na ang pera ang pinakamahirap bitawan ng tao. Alam natin na ang pera, sakim, maraming sakim, even Christians. They are so greedy when it comes to money. But look at the pres what the presence of God can do. Kahit matigas na puso, kahit napaka-greedy na tao, ay nabago ng presensya ng Panginoong Diyos. And yun yung presensya, the reason why God is filling us with the presence of God. With His presence. Is so that that presence of God in our life, yan ang dalhin natin para yan ang makapagbago ng mga tao. We go and preach. We go and teach the Word of God with the presence and with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Because it is not us will change people. It is the presence of God will change the people's lives. Amen? But if we will not do our part as Christians, if we will waste our time or the things of this world, if we will uh, sayangin natin ang panahon natin, then we will not accomplish anything in the kingdom of God. There is no meaning of being filled with the presence of God. And God only feels those who really serve God. A lot of people only want to be prayed in, in the altar to be filled with the Holy Spirit, but they don't want to serve. No. If you want to be real, to be really filled with the presence of God. If you want a real anointing of God, then you must go and serve. Because the anointing is meant for service. And alam natin yun because Jesus Christ was anointed to preach to the poor, to release those people who are in bondage. That's the use of anointing. Amen? And that's why the Bible says, keep watch because you do not know the hour. What the day your Lord will come. We don't know. Maybe He will come later. Maybe He will come tomorrow. Maybe He will come the other day. But we have to expect every day of our life. We have to expect of His coming. Baka darating na siya mamaya. Baka darating na siya ngayon. And that's why when we have that expectation daily in our life, we will make sure na gagawin natin yung best natin. When you know that Kung yan ang parating na sa isip mo, kapatid, anong gagawin mo? Kakain? Natutulog? If you know that Jesus Christ is coming today, just like the uh, uh, the five foolish virgins na hindi naghahanda? No. We are waiting for Jesus Christ of His coming and anytime He will come. And we are going to give account to Him. We are going to... Uh, Stand in the presence of God and He is going to ask us kung saan natin ginugul ang oras natin dito sa mundo. He is going to ask us kung paano natin ginamit yung pang-araw-araw na buhay na binibigay niya sa atin. Amen? And that's why we must always remember Jesus Christ might come today. That's why I have to do my best to serve Him. Amen? Tandaan po natin ito. Expectation po natin yan araw-araw. If He will not come today, 
Then tomorrow when you wake up, expect again of His coming. Lord Jesus, you might come today. That's why, tignan mo kung paano ka magsilbi ngayong araw na ito. So that you will not waste the time that God had given you. Amen? Now, also in uh, in Job chapter 14 verse 5, meron din sinabi rito. In Job chapter 14 verse 5, He says here that man's days are determined. You have decreed the number of his months and have set limits he cannot exceed. Man's days are determined. Yung buhay po natin mga kapatid ay uh, it is already determined by God. May hangganan po. We will not always live here on earth. We have to accept the fact that all of us here on earth will die. That we will not always live Buti pa yung, tapos na yung generation na nabuhay sila ng 900. But in the Bible, he says, 80 years old. Binigay ng Panginoong Diyos, 120 maximum. Ilang taon na po tayo ngayon? Ilang taon na lang po ang natitira sa atin ngayon, mga kapatid? You should think of this. Ilang taon na lang tayo para makapagsilbi sa Panginoong Diyos? Ilang taon na lang ang natitira para sa atin mga kapatid. Huwag nating iisipin dahil nagsilbi ka kahapon, hindi ka na magsilbi ngayon. No. Kahapon ay kahapon, iba na naman ngayon. When God give you another day, it's another day to serve God. It's another day to serve Him. It's another day to worship Him. It's another day to reach out, to seek God. Amen? Let's not live, sabi nila, huwag tayong mabuhay sa past glory. Mga nakaraan, dahil nagamit ka noon, nakala mo okay na no. Kung anong natapos kahapon, kahapon yun. Iba na naman ngayon. If God will give you again tomorrow, praise God. Iba na naman bukas. Let me tell you, no one is promised for tomorrow. We are not promised to live again tomorrow. Because our life, Our years are determined. Our months. Anong sabi niya dyan? Decreed the number of his man and have set limits he cannot exceed. May limit tayo na hindi tayo pwedeng lumagpas. Kaya lahat po tayo mga kapatid, kaharapin at kaharapin natin ang hangganan natin. We don't know when. We cannot stop time in coming. We are getting older and older and older and older. Ang magagawa lang natin mga kapatid is to use this time wisely. Nang sa ganun, when time comes, wala tayong pagsisisi. Di natin sasabi na sayang sana noon nagsilbi ako nung may pagkakataon ako. Sana ginawa ko yun nung may pagkakataon ako. No. We have to do it now. If you want to serve now, if you want to serve God now, then serve God now. Maraming tao kasi ang iniisip nila, magsisilbi ako pag okay na lahat. No. Hindi yan darating. Magsilbi ka and God will fix everything for you. Do not look at yourself. Huwag, mong, huwag natin isipin that we are unworthy. We are not useful. No. Regardless, bago ka pa, tawagin ng Panginoong Diyos. Alam niya na kung anong klaseng buhay meron ka. Alam niya ng buhay, kung ano yung mga pagkakamali mo sa buhay. And yet God had called you. Amen? That's why we need to take this opportunity and use our time wisely to serve God because we are running out of time. Mga kapatid, knowing these things, that we are, will only live a short time here on earth, knowing that we are running out of time, What are you going to do with the time that you have left? What are you going to do sa natitirang oras sa buhay mo? Will you remain the ganyan ka pa rin ba? Masaya ka ba na ang buhay mo ganyan lang? Mapapatuloy ka pa rin bang mabuhay sa kasalanan? Magpapatuloy ka pa rin ba na nabubuhay na hindi nagsisilbi sa Panginoong Diyos? Hindi pa rin ba tayo nagsasawa sa buhay ng mga ganto mga kapatid? 
we are running out of time. Kung hindi mo pa nasasabi sa mga magulang mo, kung gaano mo sila kamal sabihin mo na ngayon. Kung may mga kagalit ka, makipagayos ka na ngayon. Especially sa mga mahal nyo sa buhay, if you never said to your parents, your loved ones, that you love them, then tell them now. Huwag niyong sabihin kung nandun na sila sa kabaong. Huwag niyong sabihin kung kailan nandun na sila sa ospital. Kung hindi mo man naasikaso sila ngayon, asikasuhin mo. Let's not be selfish and let's not always think of ourselves. But instead, use our time to fix things into our life. Ayusin natin habang may pagkakataon tayo. Kung kailangan natin makipag-reconcile sa mga tao na kagalit natin, then let's be reconciled to them now. Habang may pagkakataon. Because we are running out of time. And what are you going to do with the time na natitira sa buhay mo mga kapatid? No one is promised for tomorrow. That's why we must use the time that God is giving to us wisely mga kapatid. Hindi na po babalik itong araw na ito. Itong araw, this Saturday, No, it will not come back again. Kung natapos na itong araw na ito, history na po ito mga kapatid. Next Saturday is another Saturday. But the thing is, have you done, have you walk to the will of God sa araw na yan? Doon sa mga nakaraang buhay mo, if you will look at your past life, ano ang nagawa mo for the kingdom of God? Nabuhay ka ba na naayon sa kanyang salita? Amen? That's why it's very important. Let's open our Bible in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. Anong sabi niya dan? There is work to be done. Sabi niya dyan in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. We are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good work. So, ang buhay natin, we are created by God for God's workmanship. To do what? We are created, we are we live. What? To, to, anong gagawin? To do good works. That which God prepared in advance for us to do. That's why before God had created us, we already have an assignment from God. Every day ng ating buhay yan. Amen? Araw-araw yan. God, hindi tayo binibigyan ng Panginoong Diyos ng buhay araw-araw para gawin natin ang gusto lang natin. God is not giving us day after day ng ating buhay para lang magtrabaho, pumunta sa kumpanya at kumita ng pera. No. Meron po tayong assignment sa Panginoong Diyos araw-araw. Meron tayong assignment ngayon. Meron tayong assignment sa Kanya. Meron siyang inihandang gawain Para sa atin, para gawin. Personally or as a church. That is good work. That's why it's always good to ask God, Lord, before you wake up in the morning, and before you do anything else in the, in the morning, it's good to always ask God, Lord, ano po ang assignment ko sa iyo ngayon? Ano po ang gagawin ko ngayon? Ano po ang may magawa ko in your kingdom? It's good always to ask God. But most of the time, God will use your pastor or your leaders to talk to you. Gawin mo yan. Gawin mo yun. Pumunta ka rito. That's why before you ask ang mga kapatiran o mga pamilya mo kung saan kayo mamamasyal, saan kayo pupunta. If you have free time, before you ask them where to go, your family, where saan tayo mamamasyal, no. Do not ask them first. Ask your pastor first. If you have a free time, Pastor, what can I do? I have free time. Meron po akong oras ngayon. Ano pong may tulong ko? Ano pong pwede kong gawin? You ask first your pastors or your leaders kung ano ang pwede mong gawin bago mo gawin yung mga makamundong bagay. Because you don't want to miss that day again. We don't, you don't want to lose your reward on that day again. Let me tell you, the Bible says that I will bless you according to what you have done. God will not bless you because of your position. God will not bless you because of your knowledge or of your of who you are. 
But God will bless you according. The measure of God's blessing to your life is nakadepende po yan sa ginagawa mo para sa Kanya. And magtaka ka na lang ba't hindi ka nabobless because you are not serving. The Bible says that God is going to reward you according to what you have done. It's either blessing or it's either curse ang reward natin sa Panginoong Diyos. Amen? If kung makamundo ang gawin mo, then curse. Pero kung for the kingdom of God, then blessing will come in your life. Amen? We have an assignment to do. Meron tayong gagawin. That's why it's always good to submit to our leaders. It's always good to submit always to them and ask them, Pastor, what can I do? Because He always use your pastor. Kaya kung inutusan ka ng pastor mo, if your pastor or your leaders is telling you to you to do something, then you should be happy because God is leading you to do good works. Do not think na ikaw ang paboritong inuutusan. Kung ikaw ang paboritong inuutusan, then you should be happy because God is giving you assignment. You are, you have a more blessing from God. Kung paborito kang inuutusan, nagawin mo yan, gawin mo to, then you should be happy. Amen? Because God is directing you and God is using your leaders and your pastors to talk to you and to direct you to do His work on that day. And tomorrow, kung inutusan ka na naman, praise God. Kung inutusan ka na naman, praise God. Kung walang inutos sa'yo, ikaw ang magtanong kung anong iutos at ipapagawa sa'yo. You do not want that day na lumipas na wala kang nagawa for the kingdom of God. Bago ka matulog sa gabi, you should always think of yourself. Bago, ka, bago mo ipikit ang mata mo, Lord, ano po ba ang nagawa ko para sa'yo ngayon? Lord, ano po ba ang naiambag ko at ano po ba ang naitulong ko in your kingdom today? You should always think that before you sleep at night. Reflect kung anong nagawa mo. At kung nakita mong nakulang ka sa araw na yan, and if God will give you another day, din bumawi ka. Huwag mo na namang sayangin yung araw na yan na lumipas na naman na wala kang nagawa. Let's not lose years and years and weeks and days doing nothing for the kingdom of God. But instead, When God give us day, another day, then we should use that for His kingdom. That's why it's always good, my dear brethren, to always uh, ask God, ask our pastors to lead us and to guide us. Amen? And that's why, doon sa John chapter 21 verse 18, anong sabi niya doon? In John chapter 21 verse 18, sabi niya, <clears throat> I tell you the truth. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hand and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Yan ang sabi ni Jesus. I tell you the truth. When you are younger, you do what you want to do. Na kaya maraming nasasayang na mga panahon. But when you are older, you will stretch out your hand. At may magdadirect sa'yo mga kapatid. Ang mga pastors natin. That's why it's always good to uh, to submit ourselves to our leaders and allow them to direct us because they are responsible for us. Our pastors are responsible for our souls. They are the one leading us into righteousness. It's always good to follow them, to submit to them, and it's always good to do exactly what they tell us to do and support them 100%. Because again, we should serve as family. And not just a member, but we should love the, the work of God. We should serve as a family. Yan ang ayaw na ayaw ng demonyo. A church that is united. The devil hates the church that is united. Because even God said himself in the Old Testament, nothing will be impossible for them when the people are doing the Tower of Babel. God said, nothing will be possible for them if they remain as one. You see, God is amazed. Kaya, ano, marami tayong magagawa, mga kapatid. We, ha we can do a lot of things, even if uh, mm, kung magkakaisa tayo. If we become united, we can do a lot of things. You see, even if there is this pandemic that we are going through, 
kahit meron po itong coronavirus, hindi po pwedeng matigil ang gawain ng Panginoong Diyos. Because God cannot be stopped. The work of God cannot be stopped. Wag po, we do not allow this pandemic to stop us in serving God. We should not even allow this pandemic to lower down our service to God even in this end time. This is a spiritual battle. And many people now are getting weaker and weaker and weaker just because of this pandemic. There is a warning of Jesus Christ in the book of Revelation chapter 2. He says that if you will not repent from the height from which you have fallen, I will come and take the lampstand out of his place. What is that lampstand? Bishop told us that that lampstand is the Holy Spirit, the anointing of God in our life. You see, you should be careful of your service na hindi bababa, especially in this end time. But instead, we make use of the time na magsilbi pa rin kahit na pa pandemic. God did not cause this pandemic na maapiktuhan ang trabaho niya. No. The kingdom of God must still prosper. The kingdom of God must still go forward. And tayong mga anak ng Panginoong Diyos, we should not be magpaapikto. Ang pagsisilbi po na sana natin ay hindi maapiktuhan ng COVID. Amen? Let's, make, let's find ways to serve God even in this time of pandemic. And praise God, kagaya ngayon, I can preach to you. I can share to you the word of God even through online. Amen? But even us here in Japan, we are doing our best. Although the government are keep on announcing every day, every 9 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, we will hear sound of warnings and they are telling us to not to go out, not to uh, iwasan ng mga maraming tao. But we still trust God. Bawal actually ang marami. That's why we cannot reserve sa mga holes dito sa, sa mga government facilities. Now we cannot reserve holes that we can use for services. But we are using parks. Even in the, kahit sa kainitan, now here in Japan, uh, last month, August, is the, yun ang summer talaga rito. Temperature reaches until uh, 30, 30, 35 to 40 degrees. But we do not have hold to use and we use parks kahit mainit just because of this pandemic but hindi po sana tayo magpa-apekto mga kapatid huwag po sana tayong magpatalo dito sa gawain ng kaaway but instead we should even gawin natin ang best natin amen we should overcome this is this is our test in our generation the past generation have also test and they have overcome. Now, this is also our test in our time. We must also overcome by the power and by the strength of God that is giving us. But let's use our time. Let's not be affected. Wag tayong magpa-apekto mga kapatid. Amen? Let's do our time. Let's usher souls in the kingdom of God. Let's serve God. Uh, one time I asked ang mga kapatiran natin, sabi ko, how many, how many uh, friend do you have on your Facebook? Ilan ang follower mo? Ilan ang friend mo? And most of them, ang friend nila in Facebook ay more than 100, more than, more than 1,000 pa ang iba. And I ask them, ilan ang napritsyan mo dyan sa 100, 1,000 friends mo? How many of your friends in Facebook ang na-reach out mo at na-sharean mo ng salita ng Panginoon? You see? God did not cause them to be your friends para lang mag-like and mag-puso-puso sa mga picture ninyo na iwan ko ba ngayon kung bakit may makita lang silang kahoy nang doon na sa, sila sa ilalim at nagpipicture doon. May makita lang silang kakaibang bato nang doon na sila picture ng picture. I don't know the meaning. Why people like selfie selfies and posting it to Facebook and Gusto nilang pinaglalalike yung iniintay nila, binibilang nila kung ilan ang mag-like sa pictures nila. I don't know kung anong mas maganda pang verse ang ipost nyo dyan. Ang sa ganun, baka may kailangan yung verse na yan at mabago pa. Instead of your... Tumat lang nagpaparehas din naman, mga kapatid. Hindi rin nababago ang mukha natin kahit na-post nyo ng ipost yan. It's all the same face. Kaya mas magandang yung verse po, mga kapatid. Because we are not unbelievers. 
we should not follow what the unbelievers are doing. May kaibahan sana. Amen? So let's make use of the time. Let's make use of the time that God is giving us. Let's use it properly and wisely, mga kapatid. Now, in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, and I want to read it in NLT, if you have uh, your NLT with you, in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verses uh, uh, 11, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11, sabi niya dyan, if you have your NLT with you, sabi niya, uh, the fastest runner doesn't always win the race, and the strongest warrior doesn't always win the battle. The wise sometimes go hungry and the skillful are not necessarily wealthy. And those educated don't always lead successful life. It, all it is all decided by chance, by being in the right place at the right time. Amen? So let's read it again. It's very wonderful. The fastest runner doesn't always win the race. Hindi lahat ng mga mabibilis ay sila parati ang nananalo. The strongest warrior doesn't always win the battle. The wise sometimes go hungry. The skillful are, necessary, are not necessarily wealthy. And those educated don't always live a successful life. It is all decided. Everything that happens is all decided by being at the right place at the right time. Amen? Meron pong plano ang Panginoong Diyos. God, there is a time for everything. Meron pong oras ang Panginoong Diyos sa lahat-lahat, mga kapatid. Let me use this as an example. For example, you are being scheduled. Nailagay ka sa schedule na ganto may gawin ka. Ay, pag in-schedule ka, mga kapatid, that is the perfect time of God. That's why they are putting you into a schedule. Because bago may schedule ang isang tao, kapatiran, they are praying for it. They pray first for it and before they make schedules. And if I... Uh, for uh, for example me sinabi ni pastora Rachel na okay mag, uh, can you be can you be the one uh, na mag-share for this anniversary at pag ang sinabi ko pwede naman pastora pero pwede bang sa next anniversary na lang do you at doon na lang ako mag-share maybe papayag siya but the blessing of God will not be there the anointing of God will not be there dahil ako ang nagsi-set ng sarili ko Ako ang nag schedule ng sarili ko. It is no longer God, but it is me. Amen? I might do the right thing at the right place and the right thing, but at the wrong time. You might be doing the right thing at the right place, but in a wrong time. Why? Because marami tayong mga dahilan. Marami tayong sinasabi. Kaya nga sabi niya, hindi lahat ng warrior na nanalo. Kahit na warrior ka at malakas ka, hindi ibig sabihin na ikaw mananalo. Kahit na pa ikaw pinakamabilis na uh, runner, hindi ibig sabihin na ikaw pa rin ang mananalo. But it is all decided by being at the right time, at the right place. Amen? That's why when our pastors and leaders told us something to do, you must grab that opportunity, mga kapatid. Let's grab that opportunity because that is the right time that God wants to use you. The anointing of God will be there. The blessing of God will be there because God already prepared that good work for you to do. And that is the good work that you are going to do. But if you do it in another time, you are doing the right thing at the right place. But in a wrong time, kaya makita mo hindi nagpo-prosper. Makita mo yung ginagawa mo, walang victory. Makita mo yung ginagawa mo, walang nabago at nabless. Why? Because the anointing of God is not there. The blessing of God is not there. The blessing of God is kung kailan ka gusto niyang gamitin. That's why if God had given you an assignment to do, then you must do it immediately. And wag, na, wag tayong magrason. Kahit anong circumstances natin, alam ng Panginoong Diyos yan. Instead, let's be willing to be used by God. Amen? Let's not waste. No matter kung ano man ang kahinaan mo, sometimes kung yung weakness mo, yun ang mga hindrances, no? 
Kahit anuman ang kahinaan mo, God will meet your needs. God will help you. Amen? That's why we must always be willing, always submit to our pastors to lead us. And if they give us the opportunities to serve, let's grab that opportunity. Amen? Let me tell you something, mga kapatid. When the Bible says in Acts chapter 17, that God is the one who created the heaven and earth, that He is not served by human hands as if He needed anything. God is not begging for our service. Whether we serve God or not, He's still God. Whether you do your part or not, He is still God. Even before there is Adam, even before there is world, even before someone will say He is God, He is already God. Hindi po kawalan ng, sa Panginoong Diyos ang magsilbi tayo o hindi mga kapatid. God can God has a reserved servants and if we will not do our part and if we will not uh, take the opportunity that God is giving us pwede po tayong palitan ng Panginoong Diyos anytime he want to change us he can change us he can use the worst sinner or the worst man in this world he can use them he can pick them out and wash them with his blood and He can fill them with His Holy Spirit and use them mightily in His kingdom. Kaya wag po tayong magpa-importante mga kapatid sa gawain ng Panginoong Diyos. But if God is giving you the opportunity, then you should grab your opportunity. Uh, yung binibigay sa iyong pagkakataon. Amen. Let's not lose our time, but let's always think that, ay, huwag nating sayangin ang oras natin mga kapatid. Amen? Our last verse, sige. Punta tayo sa last verse natin. In the book of Psalms, chapter 39, verse 4. In the book of Psalms, chapter 39, this is David. Sabi niya, Psalms, chapter 39, uh, verse 4. Sabi niya dyan, Show me, O Lord, my life's end. And the number of my days, let me know how, how fleeting is my life. Sabi niya, show me, O Lord. The number, teach, meron yung awit na, teach me, O Lord, to number our days. That we be me wise in everything that we do. Show me, O Lord, kung hanggang kailan. So that if there are changes that I need to do in my life, I will do it now. There are adjustments that I need to do. Then I will do it now. Dahil ayaw natin masayang, parate. Alam ni David, David knows how important time is. Jesus Christ knows how important time is. Kaya nga sabi nila, while still there is day, we must do the work of Him who sent me. Jesus Christ knew how important time is. Even David says, Teach us, O Lord, to number our days. That we be me wise in everything we do. Because he don't want to lose days of his life doing not the will of God. And I pray that this message will help you to redeem your time. Kung ano man yung mga hindi natin nagawa nung mga nakaraan, I pray that magkaroon ng pagbabago sa ating buhay. And wag na nating sayangin ang mga natitirang oras sa ating buhay, mga kapatid. But instead, let's use the time that God is giving us wisely. I don't know your situation. I don't know the changes that you need to do in your life. But God knows everything. I don't know the things that you need to do for the kingdom of God. But let me tell you, do it now. If you want to serve God, serve Him now. Tomorrow might be late for us. So I do your best, my brethren there in uh, Toronto. Uh, for that, sa mga panahong ibibigay sa, pa sa inyo ng Panginoong Diyos yan, please use your time wisely. Let's all use our time wisely. Not for selfish thing, not for our own self, but let's use our time serving God. Let's use our time making His kingdom our number one priority in life. Again, thank you very much for your time. 
thank you for listening. Uh, I know that uh, I don't want to take yung oras pa ng mga susunod pong mag sa akin. At uh, I know kung ano man ang kulang sa minsay, I believe that God will be the one to make you understand more deeper. Again, thank you very much for this time. And I greet you all a happy, happy 24th year anniversary. And I'm so happy to be part of this great celebration. Thank you for Pastor Rachel. Thank you for our bishop. Thank you for our pastors there in Toronto for this privilege and opportunity you have given to me. Thank you very much, Paul. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you for this wonderful time you have given to us. Thank you, O God, for allowing me to share to you uh, the things that you put into my heart, Almighty God. Lord, I pray that this message will have an impact in the life of your people. And I pray, Almighty God, that this message, O Lord God, will be may tanim po sa kanilang puso. Lord, thank you for this opportunity. You continue to bless them even as they continue to have seminar, Almighty God. Lord, continue to uh, be with them, continue to prepare their hearts to receive more of your word, Almighty God, that will transform, that will change them, that will encourage them, that will heal and deliver them, Almighty God. And thank you, Almighty God, for this opportunity. I give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much po. Dumuarigato gusaymas. God bless po.